John Joseph Black Jack Pershing, was a general officer in the United States Army who led the American Expeditionary Forces in World War I. Pershing is the only person to be promoted in his own lifetime to General of the Armies, the highest authorized rank in the United States Army, signifying service directly under the President. Pershing holds the first United States Officer Service number. He was regarded as a mentor by the generation of American generals who led the United States Army in Europe during World War II, including George C. Marshall, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Omar N. Bradley, and George S. Patton. A somewhat controversial figure, his tactics have been harshly criticized both by commanders at the time and by modern historians. His reliance on costly frontal assaults, long after other Allied armies had abandoned such tactics, has been blamed for causing unnecessarily high American casualties. Early life, Pershing was born on a farm near Lacklid, Missouri, to businessman John Fletcher Pershing and homemaker Anne Elizabeth Thompson. His paternal side ancestors, whose name originally was Pershing, emigrated from Germany in the late 18th century. Pershing's mother was of English descent. He also had five siblings, brothers James and Ward, and sisters Mary Elizabeth, Anna May and Grace. Three other children died in infancy. When the Civil War began, his father worked as a suitler for the 18th Missouri Volunteer Infantry, but did not serve in the military. Pershing attended a school in Lacklid that was reserved for precocious students who were also the children of prominent citizens. Completing high school in 1878, he became a teacher of local African-American children. In 1880, Pershing entered the North Missouri Normal School in Kirksville, Missouri. Two years later, he applied to the United States Military Academy. Pershing later admitted that serving in the military was secondary to attending West Point, and he had applied because the education offered was better than that obtainable in rural Missouri. West Point Years Pershing was sworn in as a West Point cadet in the fall of 1882. He was selected early for leadership and became successively first corporal, first sergeant, first lieutenant, and first captain, the highest possible cadet rank. Pershing commanded ex officio the West Point Honor Guard that escorted the funeral of President Ulysses S. Grant. Pershing graduated from West Point in the summer of 1886 and was commended by the superintendent of West Point, General Wesley Merritt, for high leadership skills and possessing superb ability. Pershing briefly considered petitioning the Army to let him study law and delay his commission. He applied for a furlough from West Point, but soon withdrew the request in favor of active Army duty. He was commissioned a second lieutenant in the United States Army in 1886. At age 26, graduating 30th in a class of 77. Early career, Pershing reported for active duty on September 30, 1886, and was assigned to Troop L of the 6th U.S. Cavalry stationed at Fort Bayard, in the New Mexico Territory. While serving in the 6th Cavalry, Pershing participated in several Indian campaigns and was cited for bravery for actions against the Apache. During his time at Fort Stanton, Pershing and close friends Lt. Julius Penn and Lt. Richard B. Paddock were nicknamed the Three Green Peas, spending their leisure time hunting and attending Hispanic dances. Pershing's sister Grace married Paddock in 1890. Between 1887 and 1890, Pershing served with the 6th Cavalry at various postings in California, Arizona, and North Dakota. He also became an expert marksman and, in 1891, was rated second in pistol and fifth in rifle out of all soldiers in the U.S. Army. On December 9, 1890, Pershing and the 6th Cavalry arrived at Sioux City, Iowa, where Pershing played a role in suppressing the last uprisings of the Lakota Indians. Though he and his unit did not participate in the Wounded Knee Massacre, they did fight three days after it on January 1, 1891 when Sioux warriors attacked the 6th Cavalry's supply wagons. When the Sioux began firing at the wagons, Pershing and his troops heard the shots and rode over six miles to where the attack was. The cavalry managed to make Chief War Eagle and his men retreat from the area after firing back at them. This would be the only occasion where Pershing would see action in the Ghost Dance campaign. 
In September 1891 he was assigned as the Professor of Military Science and Tactics at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, a position he held until 1895. While in Nebraska, Pershing attended law school and graduated in 1893. He formed a drill company of picked university cadets, Company A. In March 1892, it won the maiden prize competition of the National Competitive Drills in Omaha, Nebraska. The citizens of Omaha presented the company with a large silver cup, the A Euro O E Omaha Cooper Euro. On October 2, 1894, Former members of Company A established a fraternal military drill organization named the Varsity Rifles. The group renamed itself the Pershing Rifles in 1895 in honor of its mentor and patron. Pershing maintained a close relationship with Pershing Rifles for the remainder of his life. On October 20, 1892, Pershing was promoted to first lieutenant and took command of a troop of the 10th Cavalry Regiment composed of African-American soldiers under white officers. From Fort Assiniboine in north-central Montana, he commanded an expedition to the south and southwest that rounded up and deported a large number of Cree Indians to Canada. West Point Instructor In 1897, Pershing was appointed to the West Point Tactical Staff as an instructor, where he was assigned to Cadet Company A. Because of his strictness and rigidity, Pershing was unpopular with the cadets who took to calling him Nigger Jack, because of his service with the 10th Cavalry Regiment, a now famous unit formed as a segregated African-American unit and one of the original Buffalo Soldier Regiments. During the course of his tour at the Academy, this epithet softened to Black Jack, although, according to Vandiver, the intent remained hostile. Still, this nickname would stick with Pershing for the rest of his life, and was known to the public as early as 1917. Spanish A Euro, and Philip I in a Euro American Wars. At the start of the Spanish A Euro American War, First Lieutenant Pershing was the regimental quartermaster for 10th Cavalry Regiment and fought with the unit on Kettle and San Juan Hill in Cuba and was cited for gallantry. Pershing also served with the 10th Cavalry during the siege and surrender of Santiago de Cuba. Pershing was commissioned as a major of United States Volunteers on August 26, 1898 and assigned as an ordnance officer. He was honorably discharged from the volunteers and reverted to his permanent rank of first lieutenant on May 12, 1899. Soon after, he was again commissioned as a major of volunteers on June 6, 1899, as an assistant adjutant general. In March 1899, after suffering from malaria, Pershing was put in charge of the Office of Customs and Insular Affairs which oversaw occupation forces in territories gained in the Spanish Euro-American War, including Cuba, Puerto Rico, the Philippines, and Guam. When the Philippine Euro-American War began, Pershing was either ordered or requested transfer to Manila. He reported on August 17, 1899, as a major of volunteers and was assigned to the Department of Mindanao and Jolo and commanded efforts to suppress the Filipino insurrection. On November 27, 1900, Pershing was appointed Adjutant General of his department and served in this posting until March 1, 1901. He was cited for bravery for actions on the Cagayan River while attempting to destroy a Philippine stronghold at Macajambo. On June 30, 1901, Pershing was honorably discharged from the volunteers and he reverted to the rank of captain in the regular army to which he had been promoted on February 2, 1901. He served with the 1st Cavalry Regiment in the Philippines. He later was assigned to the 15th Cavalry Regiment, serving as an intelligence officer and participating in actions against the Moros. He was cited for bravery at Lake Lanao. In June 1901, he served as commander of Camp Vickers in Lanao, Philippines, after the previous camp commander had been promoted to brigadier general. Rise to general, in June 1903, Pershing was ordered to return to the United States. President Theodore Roosevelt, taken by Pershing's ability, petitioned the Army General Staff to promote Pershing to colonel. At the time, Army officer promotions were based primarily on seniority rather than merit. And although there was widespread acknowledgement that Pershing should serve as a colonel, the Army General Staff declined to change their seniority-based promotion tradition just to accommodate Pershing. 
they would not consider a promotion to lieutenant colonel or even major. This angered Roosevelt, but since the president could only name and promote army officers in the general ranks, his options for recognizing Pershing through promotion were limited. In 1904, Pershing was assigned as the assistant chief of staff of the Southwest Army Division stationed at Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. In October 1904, he attended the Army War College, and then was ordered to Washington, D.C. for general duties unassigned. Since Roosevelt could not yet promote Pershing, he petitioned the United States Congress to authorize a diplomatic posting, and Pershing was stationed as military attaché copyright in Tokyo in 1905. Also in 1905, Pershing married Helen Frances Warren, the daughter of powerful U.S. Senator Francis E. Warren, a Wyoming Republican and chairman of the U.S. Military Appropriations Committee. This union helped his military career. After serving as an observer in the Russo-Japanese War attached to General Kuroki Tamamoto's Japanese First Army in Manchuria from March to September, Pershing returned to the United States in the fall of 1905. President Roosevelt employed his presidential prerogative and nominated Pershing as a brigadier general, a move which Congress approved. In skipping three ranks and more than 835 officers senior to him, the promotion gave rise to accusations that Pershing's appointment was the result of political connections and not military abilities. However, many other officers supported Pershing and believed that, based on his demonstrated ability to command combat forces, the promotion to general, while unusual, was not unprecedented or out of line. In 1908, Pershing briefly served as a U.S. military observer in the Balkans, an assignment which was based out of Paris. Upon returning to the United States at the end of 1909, Pershing was assigned once again to the Philippines, an assignment which he served until 1912. While in the Philippines, he served as commander of Fort McKinley, near Manila, and also was the governor of the Moro province. The last of Pershing's four children was born in the Philippines, and during this time he became an Episcopalian. Pancho Villa and Mexico On December 20, 1913, Pershing received orders to take command of the 8th Brigade at the Presidio in San Francisco. With tensions running high on the border between the United States and Mexico, the brigade was deployed to Fort Bliss. Texas on April 24, 1914, arriving there on the 27th. Death of wife and children, after a year at Fort Bliss, Pershing decided to take his family there. The arrangements were almost complete, when on the morning of August 27, 1915, he received a telegram telling him of a fire in the Presidio in San Francisco, where a lacquered floor blaze had rapidly spread, resulting in the smoke inhalation deaths of his wife. Helen Francis Warren, and three young daughters. Only his six-year-old son Warren survived. Many who knew Pershing said he never recovered from their deaths. After the funerals at Lakeview Cemetery in Cheyenne, Wyoming, Pershing returned to Fort Bliss with his son, Warren, and his sister May, and resumed his duties as commanding officer. On March 15, 1916, Pershing led an expedition into Mexico to capture Pancho Villa. This expedition was ill-equipped and hampered by a lack of supplies due to the breakdown of the Quartermaster Corps. Although there had been talk of war on the border for years, no steps had been taken to provide for the handling of supplies for an expedition. Despite this and other hindrances, such as the lack of aid from the former Mexican government, and their refusal to allow American troops to transport troops and supplies over their railroads, Pershing organized and commanded the Mexican Punitive Expedition, a combined armed force of 10,000 men that penetrated 350 miles into Mexico. They routed Villa's revolutionaries, but failed to capture him. World War I At the start of the United States' involvement in World War I President Woodrow Wilson considered mobilizing an army to join the fight. Frederick Funston, Pershing's superior in Mexico was being considered for the top billet as the commander of the American Expeditionary Force when he died suddenly from a heart attack on February 19, 1917. Following America's entrance into the war, Wilson, after a short interview, named Pershing to command, a post which he retained until 1918. Pershing, who was a major general, 
was promoted to full general in the National Army, and was made responsible for the organization, training, and supply of a combined professional and draft army and National Guard force that eventually grew from 27,000 inexperienced men to two armies totaling over two million soldiers. Pershing exercised significant control over his command, with a full delegation of authority from Wilson and Secretary of War Newton D. Baker. Baker, cognizant of the endless problems of domestic and allied political involvement in military decision-making in wartime, gave Pershing unmatched authority to run his command as he saw fit. In turn, Pershing exercised his prerogative carefully, not engaging in issues that might distract or diminish his command. While earlier a champion of the African-American soldier, he did not champion their full participation on the battlefield, understanding widespread racial attitudes among white Americans generally, plus Wilson's reactionary views on race and the political debts he owed to Southern Democratic lawmakers. George Marshall served as one of Pershing's top assistants during and after the war. Pershing's initial chief of staff was businessman James Harbord, who later took a combat command but worked as Pershing's closest assistant for many years and remained extremely loyal to Pershing. After departing from Fort Jay at Governor's Island in New York Harbor under top secrecy in May 1917, Pershing arrived in France in June 1917. In a show of American presence, part of the 16th Infantry Regiment marched through Paris shortly after his arrival. Pausing at the tomb of Gilbert du Motier, Marquis de Lafayette, he was reputed to have uttered the famous line Lafayette, we are here, a line spoken, in fact, by his aide, Colonel Charles E. Stanton. American forces were deployed in France in the autumn of 1917. Battle of Harmel, for the first time in American history, Pershing allowed American soldiers to be under the command of a foreign power. In late June, General Rawlinson, commanding the British Fourth Army, suggested to Australian Lieutenant General John Minash that American involvement in a set-piece attack alongside the experienced Australians in the upcoming Battle of Harmel would both give the American troops experience and also strengthen the Australian battalions by an additional company each. On June 29, General Bell, commanding the American 33rd Division, selected two companies each from the 131st and 132nd Infantry Regiments of the 66th Brigade. However, Monash had been promised ten companies of American troops and on June 30 the remaining companies of the 1st and 2nd battalions of the 131st Regiment were sent. Each American platoon was attached to an Australian company. However, there was difficulty in integrating the American platoons amongst the Australian companies of 100 men. This difficulty was overcome by reducing the size of each American platoon by one-fifth and sending these troops which numbered 50 officers and men, back to battalion reinforcement camps. African-American units, Pershing bowed to the racial policies of President Woodrow Wilson, Secretary of War Newton D. Baker, and Southern Democrats who promoted the separate but equal doctrine. African-American Buffalo Soldiers units were not allowed to participate with the American Expeditionary Force during World War I but experienced non-commissioned officers were provided to other segregated black units for combat service e Euro such as the 317th Engineer Battalion. The American Buffalo Soldiers of the 92nd and the 93rd Infantry Divisions were the first Americans to fight in France in 1918, albeit detached from the AEF and under French command. Most regiments of the 92nd and all of the 93rd would continue to fight under French command for the duration of the war. World War I, 1918 and full American participation. In early 1918, entire divisions were beginning to serve on the front lines alongside French troops. Pershing insisted that the AEF fight as units under American command rather than being split up by battalions to augment British and French regiments and brigades. In October 1918, Pershing saw the need for a dedicated military police corps and the first U.S. Army MP school was established at Autun, France. For this, he is considered the founding father of the MPs. Because of the effects of trench warfare on soldiers' feet, in January 1918, Pershing oversaw the creation of an improved combat boot, the 1918 Trench Boot, which became known as the Pershing Boot upon its introduction. American forces first saw serious action during the summer of 1918, 
contributing eight large divisions, alongside 24 French ones, at the Second Battle of the Marne. Along with the British Fourth Army's victory at Amiens, the Franco-American victory at the Second Battle of the Marne marked the turning point of the war on the Western Front. In August 1918 the U.S. First Army had been formed, first under Pershing's direct command and then by Hunter Liggett, when the U.S. Second Army under Robert Bullard was created. After a quick victory at St. Mael, east of Verdun, some of the more bullish AEF commanders had hoped to push on eastwards to Metz, but this did not fit in with the plans of the Allied Supreme Commander, Marshal Foch, for three simultaneous offensives into the bulge of the Western Front. Instead, the AEF was required to redeploy and, aided by French tanks, launched a major offensive northwards in very difficult terrain at Meuse-Argonne. Initially enjoying numerical odds of 8 to 1, this offensive eventually engaged 35 or 40 of the 190 or so German divisions on the Western Front, although to put this in perspective, around half the German divisions were engaged on the British Expeditionary Force sector at the time. The offensive was, however, marked by Pershing's failure, his reliance on massed infantry attacks with little artillery support led to high casualty rates and the capturing of three key points. This was despite the AEF facing only second-line German troops after Erich Ludendorff's decision to withdraw to the Hindenburg Line on October 3 Euro, and a notable contrast to the simultaneous British breakthrough of the Hindenburg Line in the north. Pershing was subsequently forced to reorganize the AEF with the creation of the Second Army, and to step down as the commander of the First Army. When he arrived in Europe, Pershing had openly scorned the slow trench warfare of the previous three years on the Western Front, believing that American soldiers' skill with the rifle would enable them to avoid costly and senseless fighting over a small area of no man's land. This was regarded as unrealistic by British and French generals, and by a number of American generals such as Army Chief of Staff Tasco H. Bliss and his own Hunter Liggett. Even German generals were negative. Ludendorff dismissing Pershing's strategic efforts in the Meuse-Argonne offensive by recalling how the attacks of the youthful American troops broke down with the heaviest losses. The AEF had done well in the relatively open warfare of the Second Battle of the Marne, but the eventual U.S. casualty rates against German defensive positions in the Argonne were not noticeably better than those of the Franco-British offensive on the Somme two years earlier. More ground was gained but then the German army was in worse shape than in previous years. Some writers have speculated that Pershing's frustration at the slow progress through the Argonne was the cause of two incidents which then ensued. First, he ordered the U.S. First Army to take the honor of recapturing Sedan, site of the French defeat in 1870. The ensuing confusion exposed U.S. troops to danger not only from the French on their left, but even from one another as the 1st Division tacked westward by night across the path of the 42nd. Liggett, who had been away from headquarters the previous day, had to sort out the mess and implement the instructions from Supreme Commander Marshal Foch, allowing the French to recapture the city. He later recorded that this was the only time during the war in which he lost his temper. Second, Pershing sent an unsolicited letter to the Allied Supreme War Council, demanding that the Germans not be given an armistice and that instead, the Allies should push on and obtain an unconditional surrender. Although in later years, many, including President Franklin D. Roosevelt, felt that Pershing had been correct, at the time, this was a breach of political authority. Pershing narrowly escaped a serious reprimand from Wilson's aide, Colonel House, and later apologized. At the time of the armistice, Another U.S. French offensive was due to start on November 14, thrusting towards Metz and into Lorraine, to take place simultaneously with further BEF advances through Belgium. In his memoirs, Pershing claimed that the U.S. breakout from the Argonne at the start of November was the decisive event leading to the German acceptance of an armistice, because it made untenable the Antwerp-Meuse line. This is probably an exaggeration. The outbreak of civil unrest in naval mutiny in Germany, the collapse of Bulgaria, Turkey, and particularly Austria-Hungary following Allied victories in Salonika, Syria, and Italy, and the Allied victories on the Western Front were among a series of events in the autumn of 1918 which made it clear that Allied victory was inevitable.
and diplomatic inquiries about an armistice had been going on throughout October. President Wilson was keen to tie matters up before the midterm elections, and the other Allies did not have the strength to defeat Germany without U.S. help, so had little choice but to follow Wilson's lead. American successes were largely credited to Pershing, and he became the most celebrated American leader of the war. Critics, however, claimed that Pershing commanded from far behind the lines and was critical of commanders who personally led troops into battle. Douglas MacArthur saw Pershing as a desk soldier, and the relationship between the two men deteriorated by the end of the war. Similar criticism of senior commanders by the younger generation of officers was made in the British and other armies, but in fairness to Pershing, although it was not uncommon for brigade commanders to serve near the front and even be killed, the state of communications in World War I made it more practical for senior generals to command from the rear. He controversially ordered his troops to continue fighting after the armistice was signed. This resulted in 3,500 U.S. casualties on the last day of the war, an act which was regarded as murder by several officers under his command. 1918 also saw a personal health struggle for Pershing as he was sickened during the 1918 flu pandemic, but unlike many who were not so fortunate, Pershing survived. Later career. In 1919, in recognition of his distinguished service during World War I, the U.S. Congress authorized the president to promote Pershing to General of the Armies of the United States, the highest rank possible for any member of the United States Armed Forces, which was created especially for him and one that only he held at the time. Pershing was authorized to create his insignia for the new rank and chose to wear four gold stars for the rest of his career, which separated him from the four silver stars worn by Army Chiefs of Staff, and even the five-star General of the Army insignia worn by Marshall, MacArthur, Bradley, Eisenhower, and H. Hap Arnold in World War II. There was a movement to make Pershing President of the United States in 1920, but he refused to actively campaign. In a newspaper article, he said that he wouldn't decline to serve if the people wanted him, and this made front-page headlines. Though Pershing was a Republican, many of his party's leaders considered him too closely tied to the policies of the Democratic Party's President Wilson. The Republican nomination went to Senator Warren G. Harding of Ohio, who won the 1920 presidential election. In 1921, Pershing became Chief of Staff of the United States Army, serving for three years. He created the Pershing Map a proposed national network of military and civilian highways. The interstate highway system instituted in 1956 bears considerable resemblance to the Pershing map. On his 64th birthday, September 13, 1924, Pershing retired from active military service. On November 1, 1921, Pershing was in Kansas City to take part in the groundbreaking ceremony for the Liberty Memorial that was being constructed there. Also present that day were Lieutenant General Baron Jacques of Belgium, Admiral David Beatty of Great Britain, Marshal Ferdinand Foch of France, and General Armando Diaz of Italy. One of the main speakers was Vice President Calvin Coolidge. In 1935, as reliefs of Pershing, Jack, Foch and Diaz by sculptor Walker Hancock were added to the memorial. Pershing also laid the cornerstone of the World War Memorial in Indianapolis on July 4, 1927. On October 2, 1922, amidst several hundred officers, many of them combat veterans of World War I, Pershing formally established the Reserve Officers Association as an organization at the Willard Hotel in Washington, D.C. ROA is a 75,000-member, professional association of officers, former officers, and spouses of all the uniformed services of the United States, primarily the Reserve and United States National Guard. It is a congressionally chartered association that advises the Congress and the President on issues of national security on behalf of all members of the Reserve component. In 1924 Pershing became a member of the Pennsylvania Society of the Sons of the American Revolution. He was also an honorary member of the Society of the Cincinnati and a veteran companion of the Military Order of Foreign Wars. Pershing served on a committee of the Sons of the American Revolution to establish and recognize Constitution Day in the United States. During the 1930s, 
Pershing maintained a private life but was made famous by his memoirs, My Experiences in the World War, which were awarded the 1932 Pulitzer Prize for History. He was also an active Soviton during this time. In 1940, before and after the fall of France, Pershing was an outspoken advocate of aid for the United Kingdom during World War II. In August 1940, he publicly supported the Destroyers for Basis Agreement, whereby the United States sold 50 warships from World War I to the UK in exchange for lengthy leases of land on British possessions for the establishment for military bases. In 1944, with Congress creation of the five-star rank of General of the Army, Pershing was still considered to be the highest-ranking officer of the United States military as his rank was General of the Armies. In July 1944, Pershing was visited by Free French leader General Charles de Gaulle. When Pershing, by then semi-senile, asked after the health of his old friend, Marshal Philippe Parc copyright Tain, de Gaulle replied tactfully that, when he last saw him, the Marshal was well. Death On July 15, 1948, Pershing died of coronary artery disease and congestive heart failure at the Walter Reed General Hospital in Washington, D.C., which was his home after 1944. He was buried in Arlington National Cemetery near the grave sites of the soldiers he commanded in Europe, after a state funeral. Family, it was during his initial assignment in the American West that his mother died. On March 16, 1906, Pershing's father died. Colonel Francis Warren Pershing, John J. Pershing's son, served in the Second World War as an advisor to the Army Chief of Staff, General George C. Marshall. After the war he continued with his financial career and founded a stock brokerage firm, Pershing & Company. He was father to two sons, Richard W. Pershing and John Warren Pershing III. Richard Pershing served as a second lieutenant in the 502nd Infantry and was killed in action on February 17, 1968, in Vietnam. John Pershing III served as a special assistant to former Army Chief of Staff General Gordon R. Sullivan, also attaining the rank of colonel. He helped shape Army and Army ROTC programs nationwide. Colonel Pershing died of cardiovascular disease in 1999. Summary of Service, Dates Rank, Assignment History 1882, Cadet, United States Military Academy, 1886, Troop L, 6th Cavalry, 1891, Professor of Tactics, University of Nebraska-Lincoln, 1895, 1st Lieutenant, 10th Cavalry Regiment, 1897, Instructor, United States Military Academy, West Point, 1898, Major of Volunteer Forces, Cuban Campaign, Spanish Euro-American War, 1899, Officer in Charge, Office of Customs and Insular Affairs, 1900, Adjutant General, Department of Mindanao and Jolo, Philippines, 1901, Battalion Officer, 1st Cavalry and Intelligence Officer, 15th Cavalry, 1902, Officer in Charge, Camp Vickers, Philippines, 1904, Assistant Chief of Staff, Southwest Army Division, Oklahoma, 1905, Military Attaché Copyright, U.S. Embassy, Tokyo, Japan, 1908, Military Advisor to American Embassy, France, 1909, Commander of Fort McKinley, Manila, and Governor of Moro Province, 1914, Brigade Commander, 8th Army Brigade, 1916, Commanding General, Mexican Punitive Expedition, 1917, Commanding General for the Formation of the National Army, 1917, Commanding General, American Expeditionary Forces, Europe, 1921, Chief of Staff of the United States Army, 1924, Retired from active military service, 1925, Chief Commissioner. Assigned by the United States in the arbitration case for the provinces of Tacna and Arica between Peru and Chile. Honors and awards. United States decorations and medals. Note, the dates indicated are the date the award was made rather than the date of the service which was recognized. Distinguished Service Cross, Distinguished Service Medal, Silver Star, Purple Heart, World War I Victory Medal, Indian Campaign Medal, Spanish Campaign Medal, Army of Cuban Occupation Medal, 
Philippine Campaign Medal, Mexican Service Medal, Army of Occupation of Germany Medal, in 1932, seven years after Pershing's retirement from active service, his Silver Citation Star was upgraded to the Silver Star Decoration and he became eligible for the Purple Heart. In 1941 he was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for Extraordinary Heroism in Action leading and against hostile Moros at Mount Bagsak, on the island of Jolo in the Philippines on June 15, 1913. In 1941, he was retroactively awarded the Army of Occupation of Germany Medal for Service in Germany following the close of World War I. As the Army of Occupation of Germany medal has a profile of Pershing on its obverse this made Pershing the only soldier in the history of the U.S. Army eligible to wear a service medal with his own likeness on it. International Awards, Knight Grand Cross of the Order of the Bath, Grand Cross of the Legion of Honor, Military Medal, Croix de Guerre with Palm, Grand Cross of the Order of Leopold, Croix de Guerre, Order Vituti Militari, Order of the White Lion, Czechoslovakian War Cross, Grand Cordon of the Order of the Precious Jade, Order of the Golden Grain, Order of the Redeemer, Grand Cross of the Military Order of Savoy, Grand Cross of the Order of Saints Maurice and Lazarus, Order of the Rising Sun, Medelo Bilic, Milo Obilia Medal instituted by Peter to Petrovia Njegoa Grand Cross. Of the Order of Prince Dana Lowan, Medal of La Solidaridad, Grand Cross of the Order of the Sun, Order of Michael the Brave, Grand Cordon of the Order of the Liberator, Grand Cross of the Order of the Star of Kara George with Swords. Civilian Awards, Congressional Gold Medal, Thanks of the United States Congress, Special Medal of the Committee of the City of Buenos Aires, Induction into the Nebraska Hall of Fame, Other Honors and Miscellany. Since 1930, the Pershing Park Memorial Association, headquartered in Pershing's hometown of Laclid, Missouri, has been dedicated to preserving the memory of General Pershing's military history. On November 17, 1961, the United States Postal Service released an 8 cent Liberty issue postage stamp honoring Pershing, shown at right. Pershing was immensely popular after World War I, and as a result a large number of organization, equipment, streets and buildings are named after him throughout the United States and abroad, organizations, the National Society of Pershing Rifles, founded by Pershing, continues on today as America's premier undergraduate military fraternal organization. He also founded the Military Order of the World Wars. The 2nd Brigade of the 1st Cavalry Division is nicknamed Black Jack. The 4th Squadron of the 10th U.S. Cavalry, part of the 4th Infantry Division's 3rd Brigade Combat Team, is nicknamed the Black Jack Squadron. B Troop 5-15 Cavalry Regiment at Fort Knox, Kentucky, the home of armor and cavalry where brand new 19D Cavalry Scouts are trained. A parade field in front of the B Troop Barracks is called Pershing Field in honor of the general, and a placard of his works lies in its corner. Military Ordnance and Other Equipment The M26 Pershing Tank was an American armored vehicle introduced in 1945. The Pershing Ballistic Missiles in 1938, the Chicago, Burlington and Quincy Railroad named a diesel engine streamliner train the General Pershing Zephyr. Schools, Elementary Schools, Berwyn, Illinois. Joliet, Illinois. West Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Muskogee, Oklahoma. Lincoln, Nebraska. Killeen, Texas. Orangevale, California. Dallas, Texas. St. Joseph, Missouri. Middle Schools, Houston, Texas. Springfield, Missouri. Sunset Park, Brooklyn, New York City. San Diego, California. High Schools, Detroit, Michigan. College Buildings, Pershing Arena, Pershing Society, Pershing Hall, and the Pershing Scholarships of Truman State University in Kirksville, Missouri. Pershing Barracks at the United States Military Academy. Completed in 1895 as the Academic Building for West Point, it was renamed the West Academic Building in 1913. It was later converted to a barracks and renamed Pershing Barracks. John J. Pershing Military and Naval Science Building of University of Nebraska Euro Lincoln, Pershing Hall of Montana State University, Northern in Arthur, Montana, Pershing Hall, 
part of the University of Missouri, Columbia, Missouri. Military Buildings, Pershing Hall in the Presidio of San Francisco in San Francisco, California, Pershing Hall on Governor's Island in New York Harbor, Pershing Community Center, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, Pershing House in Fort Sam Houston, San Antonio, Texas. Buildings, the Pershing Center, a multi-purpose arena in downtown Lincoln, Nebraska, the Pershing Building in Kansas City, Missouri, located on Pershing Road, the John J. Pershing VA Medical Center, in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. The Pershing Hall in Paris, France. Pershing Memorial Hospital in Brookfield, Missouri. Streets, Pershing or General Pershing Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri. Fort Riley, Kansas, Phoenix, Arizona, Cleveland, Ohio, San Diego, California, Stockton, California, Orlando, Florida, Orangevale, California, Ocean Springs, Mississippi, Fort Worth, Texas, Milltown, New Jersey, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Avenida de General Pershing in the San Isidro District of Lima, Peru. Pershing or General Pershing Boulevard, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Cheyenne, Wyoming. Nosha, Wisconsin, Boulevard Pershing on the western edge of Paris, France runs past the Palais des Congrès near the Porte Mail lot. Many of the major streets in the area are named after notable French military figures, including Avenue Foch, named after Marshal Foch, and at either end of Boulevard Pershing, streets named after the Marshals of France Gouvien saint cyr and Koenig. It reflects the immense popularity of the American troops who first arrived in the French capital in 1916. Boulevard John Joseph Pershing in Limpertsburg, Luxembourg. Pershing or General Pershing Drive, El Paso, Texas. North Omaha, Nebraska. Florence, Nebraska. Arlington, Virginia. Arlington National Cemetery. El Segundo Playa del Rey, California. Decatur, Illinois, Pershing or General Pershing Road, Chicago. Kansas City, Missouri. Fort Bliss, Texas, Pershing or General Pershing Street, Houston, Texas. New Orleans. Hammond, Louisiana. Portland, Oregon. Cranston, Rhode Island. Squares and Plazas, Pershing Square in downtown Los Angeles. Pershing Square in New York City on 42nd Street at Park Avenue in front of Grand Central Terminal, Plaza Pershing and Zambonga City, Philippines. Parks, Pershing Field Memorial Park in Jersey City, New Jersey, Pershing Park in Washington, D.C. features the Pershing Memorial, Pershing State Park, in north-central Missouri between Lackland and Medville, Pershing Park in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Racine. Wisconsin and Arkansas City, Kansas, Pershing Field in Fort Carson, Colorado, State Pershing, a baseball park in Paris, France. Other, Pershing County, Nevada, a rideless horse was named in honor of Pershing, Black Jack. This horse was used for many years in funerals for heads of state, including President John F. Kennedy. The Pershing Division of the Clarence Cannon Conference, a high school athletic conference in northeastern Missouri in the area where the general lived during his youth. The other division in the conference honors Harry S. Truman. The John J. Pershing Grill is a casual dining room at the University Club of Washington, D.C. Pershing, a member of the club, dedicated its current clubhouse, located at 1135 16th Street, in 1921. The Great Pershing Balloon Derby at Brookfield, Missouri is named in his honor and is held over the Labor Day weekend each year. General Pershing, a British racehorse that took part in the 1995 Grand National Steeplechase. Miscellany, Pershing was a Freemason, a member of Lincoln Lodge No. 19, Lincoln, Nebraska. In popular culture, Pershing appears as a character in The Friends of Pancho Villa, a historical novel by James Carlos Blake, as well as in Hard Magic. The Grimoire Chronicles by Larry Correa. See also, Biography Portal, United States Army Portal, World War I Portal, References, Notes. Bibliography, Boot, Max. The Savage Wars of Peace New York, 
Basic Books, 2002. ISBN 0-465-00720-1, Vandiver, Frank E. Vandiver. Blackjack, The Life and Times of John J. Pershing A Euro Volume I ISBN 0-89096-024-0, Vandiver, Frank E. Blackjack, the Life and Times of John J. Pershing A Euro Volume 2 ISBN 0-89096-024-0 and this article incorporates a public domain material from websites or documents of the United States Army Center of Military History. Further reading, Goldhurst, Richard. Pipe Clay and Drill, John J. Pershing, The Classic American Soldier, Smith, Jean. Until the Last Trumpet Sounds, the Life of General of the Armies John J. Pershing ISBN 978-0-471-24693-0, Smythe, Donald. Guerrilla Warrior, The Early Life of John J. Pershing ISBN 0-684-12933-7, Smythe, Donald. Pershing. General of the Armies ISBN 0-253-21924-8, Yockelson, Mitchell of Borrowed Soldiers, Americans Under British Command, 1918. Four out by John S. D. Eisenhower. University of Oklahoma Press. ISBN A978-0-8061-3919-7, external links, Pershing Museum. Biography of John J. Pershing, New York Times Obituary, Black Jack Pershing in Cuba, The National Society of Pershing Rifles, Pershing Rifles History, Chapter 4, General of the Armies John J. Pershing, State Funeral, 15 a Euro July 19, 1948 In the Last Salute, Civil and Military Funeral, 1921 a Euro 1969 by B. S. C. Mossman and Emma W. Stark, United States Army Center of Military History, John J. Pershing. Collection at Nebraska State Historical Society, Americans Under British Command, 1918 at Borrowed Soldiers, the short film The Pershing Story is available for free download at the Internet Archive, more.